I happen to have a large supply of bricks, all the same size, same weight, all the same composition. I want to stack them beyond the edge of a table, as shown, just one brick at each height, without the stack of bricks falling over. And the question is, how far can you make the stack of bricks extend beyond the edge of the table? In my picture, the top brick is not above any point of the table's surface. So is this achievable in reality? I did this with seven bricks. Can you do it with fewer than seven bricks? Can you continue this process and make the stack extend two full bricks beyond the edge of the table, or even three full brick lengths? How far can you go? Before continuing the video, you should try this at home. In place of bricks, you can find a stack of old VHS tapes, maybe a large enough stack of books all the same size. So really, stop the video now and try this before continuing. Our first observation is that the length of the bricks doesn't matter as long as they all have the same length. I'm going to call the length of each brick two units. Now, if you want to have bricks of length L instead of length 2, then you're simply changing your units. You could just multiply all the horizontal distances by L over 2. Everything will work just as well. The reason I wanted length 2 instead of length 1 for my bricks is that it avoids fractions. The point is, I'm going to look at the midpoint of each brick. That's the balance point, or the center of mass of a brick, and it's halfway along the brick. Now, if the brick is one unit long, that gives me one half for that distance, and I want to avoid those fractions. So I will assume that the top brick extends A1 units beyond the second brick. The second brick extends a2 units beyond the third brick, which extends A3 units beyond the next brick, and so on. By the way, it's easiest to start numbering the bricks from the top of the stack rather than from the bottom. And if the first distance A1 is bigger than 1, then the top brick is going to fall over because its center of mass is beyond the second brick. So if I don't want the top brick to fall over, I'll require that A1 is less than 1. By the way, if I take A1 to exactly equal 1, then you could say the top brick might manage to balance, but just barely. It would be unstable. Just a single breath of air, or someone in the next room slamming a door, and the thing will fall over. So I'm going to require A1 to be strictly less than 1. Now, the next point at which I need to worry is the top two bricks taken together because their combined center of mass has to lie above the third brick. Otherwise, the top two bricks will fall over together. Now, I still require A1 less than 1, but now I also require an additional condition. Measuring from the far right of the stack, the top brick has center of mass one unit to the left, the second brick has center of mass A1 units to the left of that. So that's at 1 plus A1 units to the left of the far right edge. To find the center of mass of the top two bricks together, you simply average their centers of mass. Take the top two bricks and average the positions of their centers of mass. That gives a distance 1 plus. A1 over 2 to the left of the far right edge. I need this combined center of mass to lie over a point of the third brick. Now that says that A1 plus A2 must be less than 1 plus A1 over 2. So that's a new condition. It says A1 plus 2A2 is less than 2 when you simplify. On the right side of the screen, I'm going to list my conditions. 
which together will ensure that the top, in this case the top two bricks, will not fall over. The top brick and then the top two bricks together will not fall over. Next we need to worry about the top three bricks. The third brick has center of mass A2 units, the left of the center of mass of the second brick. That's 1 plus A1 plus A2 units to the left of the far right edge. Take the average of the centers of mass of the top three bricks, and you get the center of mass of those top three bricks combined. This point is 1 plus a third of 2A1 plus A2. That many units to the left of the far right edge, as shown. If the combined center of mass of the top three bricks, if that's not lying directly above the fourth brick, then your top three bricks together will topple over. We don't want that. So, reverse the inequality, and we simplify, and we get A1 plus 2A2 plus 3A3 is less than 3. And I list that as my new condition. On the right side of the screen, you're starting to see these conditions accumulate. You can see a pattern here. These are the conditions that, taken together, will guarantee the top brick doesn't fall over, the top two bricks don't fall over, and the top three bricks together don't fall over. Now you should be able to see the pattern, and I'll do one more just to make sure and just for practice. I should really be doing this as a proof by induction or something, but I'm not going to be that formal. So the fourth brick has a center of mass. A3 units to the left of the previous brick. That's a position which is 1 plus A1 plus A2 plus A3 units to the left of the far right edge. Average the centers of mass of the top four bricks to get the center of mass of those top four bricks combined. This point must lie above the fifth brick. Otherwise, the top four bricks together are just going to topple over. This gives a fourth condition, and I'll stick that also on the right-hand side. You simplify it, you get what you expect. It's the last inequality on the right-hand side. Keep going that way. If you want to stack n bricks, then you have n possible points where the bricks can start to lean over. And to prevent that, you impose n conditions. There are n inequalities shown on the right-hand side. Those are the requirements. Now the question is, can you actually find n unknowns, a1, a2, a3, up to an, satisfying these n inequalities? And if you can, then what's the largest amount that you can get the entire stack to lean over, which is the sum of the AIs? This kind of optimization problem has an algorithmic approach to solving it. It's an approach which will in fact allow you to maximize the distance by which the stack of n bricks can be made to extend beyond the table edge. That approach is not in calculus or in analysis, rather it's in linear programming. So that's just a passing reminder that calculus is just a start to mathematical techniques and optimization. It's uh, very, very far from everything you need to know. Calculus is just a small part of mathematics. It's even a small part of optimization. But in this case, we don't need to learn about linear programming to solve our problem. We can guess and check a solution. It will answer the question for us. And it's more or less motivated by the experience you should have acquired in your homework, which I told you to stop and try to build up this stack of books or VHS tapes or whatever. Because in that experiment, what I'm hoping you discovered is that the stack has to kind of arc downwards. So it's kind of a concave down pattern to the books. Or another way to say what's needed here is that the AIs form a positive decreasing sequence. I've kind of shown that by my picture. 
A1 greater than A2 greater than A3, and so on. So what kind of a sequence does that? Well, I'm going to reproduce that effect in a very simple way by taking AK to be C over K, where C is just a fixed constant. And of course, I need that constant to be between 0 and 1 to satisfy any of the inequalities. Let's not worry yet what that constant is, the constant C. I'll worry about it later. The important thing is this gives us a positive decreasing sequence of AKs. So let's go with that. Let's try it. Let's see if this satisfies, first of all, the required inequalities. Now the case inequality, I'm showing you here at the top of the screen, the case inequality has a left side which simplifies as C plus C plus C plus da -da 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 plus C, K times, in other words, C times K. So as long as C is less than 1, the case inequality will be satisfied. And all of the inequalities will be satisfied this way. So the stack of bricks will not fall over. Now the question is, how far, if you build your stack of books or VHS tapes, if you build your stack this way, how far does the stack extend beyond the edge of the table? Well, for that, the distance that you're extending is c plus c over 2 plus c over 3 plus da -da 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 plus c over n. Common factor of c comes out. What's left inside the parentheses is the nth partial sum of the harmonic series. Now, the partial sums can be made as large as we want. So, in other words, there's no limit to how far a stack of books or bricks can be made to extend beyond the edge of the table. And by the way, if you want to extend a full brick length beyond the edge of the table, you really only need four bricks to do that. Or if you want to go two full brick lengths beyond the edge, you need 11 bricks. And you can check by what we did, at least. It takes 11 bricks to do that. If you want to extend 10 bricks beyond the edge of the table, you need 12,367 bricks to do that. So with my old VHS tapes, I, I could probably get about five tape lengths beyond the edge of the table before it all collapses, but it would be so tall it would get above my ceiling. Which gives another consideration, by the way. Try to practically do this kind of construction. Now, the reason I'm giving you this is to try to give a practical significance to the divergence of the harmonic series. You really need to believe in your heart of hearts that the harmonic series diverges. And I've seen enough students that really, after having explained it any number of times, they still don't understand or believe it. I know of a graduate student who years ago, his thesis was involving something that required partial sums of the harmonic series. And part of his thesis, he had that the sum of the harmonic series is bigger than 5.7. And he'd come back a month later and he managed to show that it was 6.2 or something, you know. So he's actually adding up terms on a computer. But he was sure that he was going to get to the sum of the harmonic series. He was sure of it. His committee could not convince him. And he kept going with it. He scheduled his defense. It was not approved by the committee. They discouraged him from even trying to defend. And he ultimately did not get his degree. But this was a student who just, no matter what, just couldn't believe that the harmonic series wasn't going to converge. Think about it. The harmonic series really does diverge. 